Welcome. This is James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com, and we both welcome you back to The New World Next Week. The main site is NewWorldNextWeek.com. That's where you can find past episodes, show notes, and how to get involved and how to submit your own stories using hashtag New World Next Week. James, we'll begin with, you know, like a flashback to the 90s. We can just put on some old Bill Hicks records, turn on the TV and see the Bush crime family as, as they were all this last week as Poppy Bush turned 90 and parachuted out of a plane. And we can also watch another war in Iraq. Because as you noted earlier this week on Twitter, James, this is the real meaning of Mission Accomplished. Let's just get the baseline intro from CBS News as Islamist militant group ISIS takes hold of Iraq. President Obama said on Friday the 13th that the mounting violence in Iraq should be a wake-up call for Iraq's leaders, committing the U.S. to help halt the advance of Islamist extremists, but saying that an ultimate resolution must come from Iraq's political leaders. In January, this group, now known as ISIS, even though their actual acronym should be ISIL, ISIS has much more kind of mythical weight to it. In January, they captured Fallujah, the regional hub just 40 miles west of Baghdad, raising fears of an incursion into the Iraqi capital. The fighting took another dramatic turn this past week when ISIS militants seized Mosul, Iraq's second largest city, and the heart of the Kurdish community in northern Iraq. James, some of the latest just coming in this day today as I come to you June 18th. They've attacked Iraq's largest oil refinery, which, again, should cause question of who these attacks really benefit. But let's break it down with an article posted to Global Research that notes the U.S. was trained or rather, the U.S. trained ISIS, I should say, at a secret Jordan base. Members of the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant, or ISIS, were trained in 2012 by U.S. instructors working at a secret base in Jordan, according to informed Jordanian officials. The officials said dozens of ISIS members were trained at the time as part of covert aid to the insurgents targeting the regime of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad. The official said the training was not meant to be used for any future campaign in Iraq, but the Jordanian officials also said ISIS members who received U.S. training to fight in Syria were first vetted for any links to extremist groups like Iraq. James, please help us break down this latest round of seemingly never-ending, decades-long war of aggression. Well, that's exactly what this is about. It's about constant destabilization. And what I mean by this is the real mission accomplished is that this was the long-term plan of, of course, the PNAC crew. And even going back well before them, going back to the Oded Yunom plan, um, Israel has had Iraq in its crosshairs for a very long time, wanting to break it up, wanting to uh, to break up all of the different uh, parts of the region into four warring factions. And as we see the possibility of Iraq being split uh, in an official sense now between Kurds, Shi Shiites, and uh, Sunnis, I think we are seeing the the beginnings of the possibility of that. So um, some huge shifts that are taking place on the geopolitical table right now. Um, I'm I'm glad you pointed out that U.S. trained ISIS at uh, Jordan base. I think that's a very important story. And that goes back to a story that Boiling Frogs Post uh, broke back in November, December of 2011. And I actually did an interview at that time with uh, with an insider whistleblower who was talking about U.S. training at uh, that Jordan. Jordan military base. We got a lot of flack for that at the time. Oh, you're just making this up. Why do? Why should we trust you? Um, it was confirmed uh, a, a year later in the alt media, uh, two years later in the MSM, even the Guardian and papers like that uh, were talking about it. And now it comes out, oh yeah, they were training ISIS as well. So a uh, very important little thread of that story right there. And of course, it's being th- framed in a lot of the, uh, the media that's reporting on it as blowback. Oh, it's blowback. No, it's not blowback. It's the U.S. training these terrorists to be terrorists. That's exactly what the U.S. is doing. That's what they've done for a very long time. Let's not sugarcoat it or uh, put a candy uh, floss over it. Um, now, what I what I think is really happening here, and in addition to the breakup of Iraq, we're seeing some huge swings on the geopolitical table and potentially ones with very large ramifications, including the fact that the U.S. and Iran are collaborating um, at, the, at the table right now because both of them do not want 
do not want uh, ISIS to, to reach Baghdad or to, to overthrow um, the Iraqi government altogether. Obviously, the Shiites in, in Iran have a, a vested interest in making sure that the Wahhabi Sunni terrorists don't overrun the country. And uh, the U.S., at least nominally, has to be on their side in all of this. Although Iran should be very careful about this, because if they don't understand that the U.S. is funding the, the Sunni terrorists as well, then they're just a bunch of dum-dums. Um, but now we also have Saudi Arabia, of course, which is quite explicitly helping to uh, to fund and train uh, ISIS and uh, our Wahhabists themselves. They obviously are tacitly and in some respects openly supporting uh, ISIS and thus are against the official U.S. policy. Yet another wedge between the U.S. and Saudis which, as Saudi begins to uh, to develop its uh, relations with uh, with China, I mean, this is becoming a very important shift that's going on right now. And some people are talking about this as the end of the petrodollar. I don't know if it's the end, but it might be the beginning of the beginning of the end. And uh, that's going to be a very long process. In fact, the U.S. and Saudis just signed another $60 billion arms contract, their lar- largest ever. So I'm not sure that wedge is going to be driven home quite yet, but it is forming. And that's extremely significant. So a lot is on the table right now. And of course, this also brings in the possibility that we will see that Syrian intervention after all, because, hey, ISIS was operating from there as well. So you, you gotta, if you're going to send in troops anywhere, you might as well send them to Syria as well. So a lot is happening right now. We're going to have to keep our eyes on this story and, uh, and follow the developments, because I think this is going to turn on a dime. James, we will include links to that Boiling Frogs post piece, as well as things to help flesh out, as you just did, the, the geopolitical seen and unfortunately that's not going to be the last time in this episode that we talk about the terror creation complex however let's move to our second story this week with another major piece of news that we gave reference to on previous episode of new world next week but didn't get into james now there's the perfect way to get into the bo bergdahl propaganda story because wouldn't you know it some of the same characters we've been following who help curate and and code the culture and what the official stories are supposed to be this comes from variety bo bergdahl movie project in the works from katherine bigelow and mark bowl zero dark 30 director katherine bigelow and writer producer mark bowl are planning a movie based on recently released u.s army sergeant bo bergdahl The project would be produced through mark bowl's recently launched page one production company Separately, Fox Searchlight has acquired the movie rights to America's Last Prisoner of War, written by the late Michael Hastings, whose story was published in 2012 by Rolling Stone magazine while Bergdahl was still a prisoner of the Taliban. Bo Bergdahl spent, this is the uh, the official story as we know it, Bo Bergdahl spent five years as a prisoner of war of the Taliban until his release on May 31st in a controversial exchange for five Taliban prisoners at the U.S. military facility in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. The 28-year-old returned on June 13th, again Friday the 13th, to an Army medical facility in San Antonio. The Obama administration did not inform Congress of the release. Despite the requirement of a 30-day notice of any transfers from Guantanamo, the administration has asserted that it ignored the requirement in the belief that Oswald, I mean, Bergdahl's health was deteriorating. U.S. Special Operations Forces recovered Bergdahl at a helicopter pickup point in eastern Afghanistan. The Army has launched an investigation led by Major General Kenneth Dahl, into Bergdahl's 2009 disappearance and capture in Afghanistan. James, we've covered Catherine Bigelow, Mark Bull, and their pretty much exactly illegal amount of access to critical documents when it concerns the official end of the character known as Osama bin Laden, which gets turned into an Academy Award-nominated film that Michelle Obama doesn't give the Oscar to that. She ends up giving it to a different CIA production. But again, it it, it goes on coming soon to a theater near you, James. That's exactly right. Well, as much as I detest Bill Maher and his politics and everything he stands for, perhaps we can borrow his New Rules segment to create a new rule of our own. New Rule, if Zero Dark Thirty and its producers or directors or anyone uh, associated with that film is involved with another film um, about a historical subject or an ongoing political subject, chances are it's a psyop, and we should treat it as such. So uh, Zero Dark Snow Job is going to be uh, the the veneration of that that CIA uh, NSA insider 
um, that snow job that's that's taking place. And now we have uh, the Bo Bergdahl snow job, which is just a psyop of a different sort. And uh, that's the way I place this Bergdahl story. Um, this is complete psyop to keep people in the in the war on terror narrative and to keep thinking about that. And I think it's feeding into something very, very worrying that I'm seeing developing, which is this new meme of the new 9-11. Uh, we've had Lindsey Graham and others coming out saying they're absolutely certain we're going to be struck. It's another 9-11. Uh, CBS News has headlines up like, will ISIS plan a 9-11 style terror plot against the US? They're definitely trying to ramp up the uh, the terror, the phony war on terror uh, narrative again. Again, can you believe it? Um, and so, uh, because I, I think because their uh, their their plot in, in Eastern Europe with Ukraine didn't quite work as planned, so they're kind of dropping that narrative now and going back to their old standard. And I think that this Bo, Bo Bergdahl movie, movie and all of that just feeds into that, oh, they've released five terrorist masterminds. I wonder if they'll be involved in the next plot. And then we can all blame it on Obama and go back to some Republican government or something of that sort. Um, a very, very worrying development. So we have to, to be out in front of this one and uh, calling it for the BS that it is. This all really plays into, James, here in the States, what, what you just referred to, that the, the phony political assignments. And this gets built up even more as, as we have this recent Benghazi arrest. And these, James, these are the sorts of things. So whether it's Benghazi or whether it's Bo Bergdahl, this is the real big kind of Fox News rabble rabble talk radio that that's getting the, the phony conversation going. I'm glad you reminded me of the, the fears of are they planning a new 9-11 I'll include a link to my own snarky tweet that said, you know, is ISIS planning new 9-11 attacks? I don't know. Let's ask at CIA, who just officially joined Twitter in this past week, James. As we make a technology note, we will shift to our third and final segment this week on episode 197 of New World Next Week. As hockey fans in Los Angeles down a drone in a Stanley Cup frenzy. Several videos, James, posted online showing what has been described as hockey fans destroying a Los Angeles Police Department drone outside the Staples Center Friday the 13th night after the L.A. Kings won the NHL Stanley Cup. Riot police were called in to break up what the L.A. Times described as a melee outside the arena where the Kings victory over the New York Rangers. In one of the clips posted, a drone can be seen hovering over the crowd of hockey fans before it's knocked out of the sky by people throwing shoes and clothing, chanting then, we got the drone, we got the drone. But with no official response, James, no one can really confirm whether the drone in the video actually belonged to the LAPD. But Seattle Police Department did recently give the LAPD drones, however, the types that were given, a Dragonflyer X6, which is what Seattle gave LAPD, does not look like what is in this video. So one of the updates from this story, James, and I grabbed this text from Business Insider, a lot of folks suggest that it's called the DJI Phantom Series. And what is that? That's a consumer drone. James, it looks like essentially a consumer. 